In this tutorial, we'll look at how to build a story map web map application. Right now we're looking at a story map web map application that I created previously that looks at certain businesses in the state of Massachusetts and incorporates web maps that I've previously created. So how do we build this thing? Well, before we can begin the process of building it, we need to make sure that we've done a few things. First, we need to have already created, saved, and shared one or more web maps that we plan to incorporate into this overall application. Next, we need to assemble all of the links or URLs to the multimedia and or websites that we plan to incorporate into the application as well. So there's a variety of ways we can get started once we have those things settled. Um, ESRI provides a web page with a list of all the different kinds of templates they offer to create these map applications for our story maps. The one that we're going to use is called a story map journal. And here on this web page, you can see that we have the option to learn more about that. And that's something that's worth looking at because they provide both examples as well as short tutorials on how to build that. But once we're ready, we can click on build a map journal to initiate the web map application wizard. However, more commonly, you'll want to initiate the wizard from the web map. So let's say that we've just completed our web map. It's uh, organized the way we want it to be. So now we can begin to build our web map application. To do that, we click on the share button and then create a web app. And we're interested in building a story map. So we'll click on that on the left hand side. And then we're offered a series of templates that we can use. The one we're going to use for this tutorial is a story map journal. So I'll choose that option. Click create app. And then just like with a web map, it's going to ask me to give it a title. It by default uses the title from the web map you started from, tags, and then this is going to be the summary. And so I'm going to accept all the defaults to make it similar to what I've already created. Click on done. And now we begin the web map application wizard. So at the outset, you have a choice between the default side panel, which is the one that I use, or a floating panel option. We'll go with the default one. Click start. And now it wants a title for the web map application. So the title should be something that's fairly explanatory. So I'm going to call mine Psychics of Massachusetts, a regional tour. Hit the advance button. All right. The first thing we need to do is decide on what we want to appear in the main stage. That'll be the right-hand side of the web page. You have several options here. You can make, a, you can incorporate a pre-designed uh, web map, an image that will fill that frame, a YouTube video, or an entire external web page. We're going to use the map that we've previously created, so we're going to use the drop-down here to select the map. So by default, it chooses the last map that I worked on. If you've already create, created one map, that's the only thing you'll see. Otherwise, if you choose select a map, you can browse through other options that you've already previously created. So I'm going to choose that this is my first map. Now when I do that, it gives me the option of how to look at that map. And it gives me quite a bit of control. So by location, I, if I click on custom configuration, I can control how that map appears. And so here I can zoom into a particular part of the state or zoom further out. So when I control the extent and scale and I get it to what I like, I choose Save Map Location. I can also control the content of that. And what that means is that I can, do, I can control which layers are turned on or off. So I'm going to click on Custom Configuration again. And for the moment, I don't need to see the um, population density, the orange polygons, because it's a little distracting. And in fact, I don't think I need to see the geology temp. I just want to highlight the points. So I'll Save Map Content. Okay, and I can also incorporate uh, a legend for the symbols, and I want an overview map or an inset map that shows the general region that we're in. So I'll just incorporate those as well. Click Next. Now this is on the left side of the page, the side panel, and so and particular for the for the home page, this first page, you want to have some text that kind of introduces the user to what they're going to look at. In this case, this is a story map about psychic businesses in Massachusetts. Click Add. And now we've essentially got the beginnings of our web map application. 
So when people come to the website that you provide for them, the URL, they're going to see this first. They're going to see the side panel of text and they're going to see this uh, web map on the right hand side, which is interactive course. Uh, it's been preset with the configured pop-ups that we created previously as well as labeling and other things. And I've also, even though the other layers are there in the original map, they're, the only layer I'm making visible at the moment is that point layer. Now I can control what happens in this main stage area in a variety of ways. I did it at the outset by deciding on the extent as well as what layers to show. But I can actually add controls into the side panel that allow me to initiate certain actions to happen over here as well. So to do that, I'll click on the edit button right here, the little pencil. And then I'm going to choose um, text that I'm going to in, kind of make the main stage control. So I'm going to add a line of text here, and I'm going to make this essentially like a hyperlink that's going to initiate action. So the way I do that is I highlight the text, and I click on main stage actions. And then I click on the change main stage content button. It looks like a map and a camera with two kinds of cameras there. I'll click on that and then it asks me what I want to do. Now I can do a variety of things. I can make it so that when I click on that link, the entire content of the main stage changes to some other thing, another map, an image, a video, whatever it is. I'm going to use the same map, and but I'm going to change its location to zoom in in a certain area. So I'm going to click custom configuration for the location and I'm going to zoom in to the Boston region right here, a little closer, and then save that location. And I'm going to change the content. I'm actually going to add the population density layer. And I'm going to make it so that one of the pop-ups comes up. So I'm going to hit custom configuration for the pop-up. I'm going to click on this one right here, the Mystic Way. All right. And save that configuration. Apply it. Save it. Okay. And what it does is it duplicates the text, which is a little annoying, so I need to make sure I fix that. So this text right here with a dotted underline is essentially the hyperlink. So I'm going to cut and paste that to where I want it. So I'm going to put it underneath, paste that there, and I'll get rid of the original. Save that. Okay. Now when I click on that particular uh, hyperlink, it zooms in and pops up and also adds the... Um, population density layer to the map. So a lot of things can happen, just a few of them if you want, but you have a lot of control within the main stage, uh, or excuse me, within the side panel to control what happens in the main stage. Um, as you construct your story map, you're going to want to add sections to it. So this is the opening web page or opening um, section. So I'm going to click add section to add another one, and it goes through the same process again. It's going to ask me, well, what do you want to call the title? So we can say, um, I'm going to call this Ley Lines of the World. In this case, instead of using a map, I'm going to use an image. And in this case, I'm going to use an image from a web page. So I need to use the URL. It could have been from one of my social media sites. And I've already found one previously that I want to use. It's this Ley Line Map of the World. So I'm going to copy the URL to that and then go back to my um, URL uh, dialog window and paste that in there. And then I can choose to fill or fit or stretch or however I want to do it. So I'm going to fill it so it fills that whole area. And then I'm going to say a lot of ley lines in the world. Add that. And now when people move advanced to this particular section, they're going to see a changed image as well as different text here. So again, I can go to the main page, advancing up. And as I move through, the content changes kind of like moving through slides. I can also incorporate other items in the side panel, for example, multimedia such as images or videos. So, for example, if I wanted to incorporate um, uh, a YouTube video in here um, that was in the side panel to give it a little more interest, um, I'll use this button right here to insert an image video web page, click on that, and then choose up in the top level what I wanted to incorporate. So I'm going to choose a video. And specifically, in this case, I'm going to use a YouTube video. And it asks me for the URL of the YouTube video. So I found one that I want to use. And in order to use it, I need to get the share URL. So when you zoom, uh, excuse me, scroll down on the YouTube video, there's a share button. And it offers you a link. So we want to copy that. Coming back to our dialog window here, we want to paste in that URL. Click check to make sure it's going to work. It shows you a preview about that. 
So we'll say select this video. Again, fit it or choose a custom dimension. We'll take the default to fit. Apply. All right, you'll see that it shows up below there, and then we just hit save. Okay. And when people advance through your sections, what they'll see when they go from the home page or the, excuse me, the home section to the next section, they'll see that this video shows up and they click on it, it starts to play right within the window. So we have a lot of uh, capabilities to add items to that. We can also make hyperlinks to external web pages in there. As a general rule, you want to you're going to want to keep your user within the confines of your web map application. So I wouldn't introduce uh, external URLs early on because then you'll <laughs> you'll send your your user off into another direction. So you want to keep them kind of within um, your application. But there you go. You have a lot of flexibility, and the main thing is to assemble the materials that you're going to use first, and then begin to build them into your uh, web map application. When you're ready to um, share this, make sure that you set it uh, with identifying information. So if you click on the settings button up top, you can control the header information and this is where you can put in, you can change the logo, but you can also uh, put in information about you. So here I'm putting a little bit of information about myself. I can put a link to my web page if I want to. I can alter the logo information. I can change other options about the layout, but I just wanted to add a little bit of identifying information that shows up right here on my side panel so that we know where this is coming from. Um, when I'm ready to go with this item, I need to save it. And then I need to share it. By default, it's public right now. And this is the web address that you will share with somebody else so they can look at it. Alternatively, if you had an existing website, you could actually embed your web map application into that website. Once you've shared your web map application, you can see it listed in your contents whenever you log into ArcGIS.com. For example, from the home page, when you log in, if you go to My Content Now, you should find that that web map application is listed as one of your options. So here at the bottom of my list of contents, I see this is my first map. This refers to the original web map we've created previously. This item right here, it says web mapping application. That's the thing that we've just created. That's that interface that incorporates the interactive web maps as well as the other content. Uh, when you're logged in, you can always go back to view that application and you'll be able to resume editing and adding any changes. The nice thing is that any changes you make are made in real time and so that viewers of that will see those updates uh, automatically. Now, if you find that in working in your web map application, there's something that you want to change in the original web map uh, to offer, that needs to be done separately within the web map. So you don't want to get confused between the web map application, which is this overall interface, and the web maps, which are separate um, items. So you need to work, you can work on those simul uh, separately, uh, depending on what it is you're trying to edit. But once you've done that, you've got a live web page, essentially, of an application that you can share with anyone who has an internet access.